Okay, I'm back. Get down, Audrey. Okay. Action! Very good. Stroud? Let's turn the camera. You remember the you remember the bag. Go get the bag. <laughs> In the making of a film, there's a great deal that takes place that the viewing public never gets a chance to see. There are a number of people who work behind the scenes, each performing their individual task, who are only recognized by a small and fleeting final credit. Such was the case in the making of They Made Movies in Ithaca. This film was the final result of a four-week summer film institute at Ithaca College, which was designed to give beginning and advanced students the opportunity and experience of working on a full-length documentary alongside working professionals. It was out of their combined learning and working experience that a film was created. Acting as chief consultant for the Film Institute was Willard Van Dyke, who has worked with the American documentary since 1939, first with the U.S. Film Service, and then with the Office of War Information, and lastly, he became director of the Department of Film of the Museum of Modern Art in New York. He has proven to be a leader among American documentary filmmakers for the past 30 years. Well, shall I tell you the truth, or shall I, shall I make up a nice story? <laughs> Well, uh, I got a letter from uh, Dr. Kesh, uh, who said he was coming to New York, and he'd like to discuss with me uh, the suggestion that uh, I might be involved in an institute here. And he came to New York on a Saturday, and we went out to lunch together, and he told me what the plans were. They sounded exciting to me. And he asked me what period I had free during what month, and it happened that it was July. And so... Um, I agreed uh, that it would be fun to come up here and do it. I had no idea how much fun it was going to be. Narrator for the film was the late Emmy Award-winning writer and producer Rod Serling, who had been a visiting professor at Ithaca College and an invaluable asset to the development and growth of their School of Communications for many years. Without trying to be corny about it, I'm delighted they're making film. Uh, it's been my concern on a college level that we don't shoot enough footage that we take too much out of a textbook, that we listen much too much to lectures, that we hear how, but we never are shown what. And to me, that text, from a text point of view, uh, from an educative point of view, I think is the only way to learn how to shoot movies. And the other thing being this level of be brave about it. If it's never been done, try it. If it looks like an inordinate shot, shoot it. Uh, if you've never seen it before, by all means, try it. The horizons of this thing are limitless. The way to make movies, and within within the realm of every single individual who's shooting the picture, is a strange capacity to do something different, which they should do. Well, I think the first thing to do would be to uh, get a script that everybody agreed upon, or that at least the director agreed of, that he wanted to shoot, and that can take. I think it's unreasonable to expect to get that in a week. I just don't think that's possible to do. Um, but we learned a lot in the process of attempting to get that. I would say that you break it down into research. And basically, at the time, the only, the only real research that, that prefaced any writing of the script was your conversations with Stainton who was the walking encyclopedia of information on silent films in Ithaca. Right. There was really nothing else to go by. However, as the interviews began to materialize, we had additional information to work with. Uh, and then into writing, and then in the conference uh, among the various people involved, and rewriting, and perhaps again rewriting. The first draft was the one the Institute got. Right, and it was strictly, in the beginning it was strictly a dramatic treatment of, of just simply recreating um, an old silent film. They're going to undercrank and everything. We were going to originally just shoot our own silent film, and that's all that was going to be in the documentary. It may be sufficed with some interviews. Mm -hmm. And the way it's shaping up now, it, it's working out nicely. But this whole film 
well, in the beginning, we were just going to make a film about Silence and Ithaca. Mm -hmm. and then the whole thing was playing around the fact that there was a lot of glamour in Ithaca. And then we got down to the real nitty-gritty and said, wait a second, Ted Wharton was filmed in Ithaca. Right. Which is so, back to the original, one back. of the original right. treatments well, where we had a running one. character. We, we, you need a central character around whom right. to tell the story. Right, and it, is, now, and it was Ted Wharton in one of our original right. thoughts, and it is now being, it's now back to being right. Ted Wharton. But then finally you come up with something that you, everybody feels maybe is not the greatest thing in the world, but is accomplishable. The script took over a week to write, and even then was only loosely defined and still changing. The shooting crew used this time to film locations and interviews, only a small portion of which was used in the final version of the film. Is everybody ready? All right. Camera. Action. Hang loose, sir. You're dignified, but hang loose. Okay. Look over to me. See, there's a great place. Okay. Button your jacket. Smile. Okay. That up, boy. What is the job of the director? And someone once said, I think it may have been Garson Kanan who said it, that the function of the director is to direct the creative energies of the cast and crew toward the achievement of the requirements of the, of the, the scene. A director's job is to get his concepts on film through other people. You have to rely totally on your personnel and it's a good feeling when you have good people, and I have good people. Personally, uh, I've always felt that the best directors I've ever watched work and the best directors I've ever known were those who ran what's been called a quiet set, where they, there was never any shouting, there, was never any, there were never any directions that were given uh, broadly to the whole cast. The, Actors were worked with carefully and quietly off to one side, maybe a mere suggestion. When I was picked to be the director, I was very pleased and very energetic about the whole institute. And of course, with taking into consideration the problems that you have as a director, the first was to contend with four superiors. The second was to contend with temperamental actors who'd lock themselves in their room and wouldn't act for the day, which would cancel your afternoon shooting. Things like camera breakdown, like a man with a car, the only one who can drive the car is the man who owns it. Little things like that can make the job of the director difficult at times. So the attitude of the director toward the script, the attitude of the director toward his actors, and the willing willingness to help them in any way that he possibly can. I think that those are the first steps toward real, realism. As a filmmaker now myself, when I leave here, I will know how to set up shots. I will know that now. I'll make a lot of mistakes, but at least I have a real good understanding of what a director is supposed to be now. getting a script just before you go out in the set. Therefore, Roll you don't have the time two. to visualize it. 
And when you get out on the set, you're standing around trying to visualize while all this action is going on no, around don't break you. Him up. Don't and all break these questions up. are flowing into you. Let's lead Where do we set up? What kind of shot do you want? Well, you don't know. Lead him in. Because you've just gotten out there, and you've just Ellie, gotten the go script in him. your hand, and you haven't had time hey, to do you, anything Ellie, with look it. Toward me more. There you go. There you go. Now hold that, hold that. Cut. Okay, let's take it together. What was the matter? Okay, please don't walk so fast. This machine goes about 16 feet a minute, meaning that it's a while before anybody sees what they've shot. After going through this machine once, you have your original footage, which then has to be work printed on the printer and processed again meaning that it's going to be probably at least seven hours before you see what you actually shot in the camera. In a film like this, we've processed a hundred, no, a thousand feet um, a day at least. 10,000 feet were shot for the film, and that had to be work printed. So 20,000 feet will have gone through this machine for the Institute by the end. And um, if any of it comes out, it's complete magic. What do we got here? Ah, great, it's all set up. That's good. This is the uh, <coughs> car sequence. The car sequence? Yeah, with Elliot and uh, yeah. Yeah. the car. Yeah. That's, That's great. Yeah. Yeah. The process is really coming across for us. It's all set up. Yep. Yep. Okay, let's definitely yeah. check this one. Oh, look at it. Look at it. Frame it. The, um, the exposure is pretty good in this. We finally got that down. Beautiful. Yeah. And, uh, I think the car looks good. You know, it comes out of the shadows. And it looks pretty good. What, what the hell is Ellie doing there? I don't know. Oh, my God. Good thing. Uh, oh, shh. Chewing gum. Yeah. Look at that scene. And he's chewing gum. Chewing, yeah, he's chewing it in, he's chewing in this shot, too. The fact that he's chewing gum in 1912 doesn't make much sense. Not for a 45-year-old English gentleman. Why the hell did I see it? I don't know. we got to reshoot that scene. we got to reshoot the whole goddamn thing. Editing is where the film is finally assembled. The first responsibility is to screen out unusable footage, which every editor comes across. After this initial screening, comes the editor's most difficult and, at the same time, most creative task. He is faced with the challenge of lining up all the individual shots into a form that best tells the story, keeping in mind the artistic considerations of continuity, tone, motion, rhythm, and tempo. For the initial sequence of this film, they decided that a quick pace was most desirable. <laughs> This kind of pacing causes a feeling of excitement which would not be appropriate for some other parts of the film. For example, a slower pace would better express the scenic beauty of Ithaca. is one of the more important yet unnoticed elements of film. Kareem, can you like flop those two? Do that first and then just take that into the rain. We asked uh, a music major from the college to come in and help us improvise on the piano some uh, different pieces to go along with the parts of the film that don't have any sound with them. Our own recreations, uh, our still, still photography, uh, and things of that nature. We will not be putting any uh, music or dubbed over sound over any of the interviews. What we're, gonna, what we're visualizing is a soundtrack that has an old-style flair to it, the old piano player type of ring to it, 
with uh, some modern improvisation thrown in. Uh, trying to think in your mind what that is is not easy. And it'll be just a long process of trial and error until we find something we like. Seems like a, lo a long time for four minutes. But there's a lot that goes into making the finished product. You might start out with uh, 10, 10 to 15 minutes of total sound. And that has to be timed for each scene and has to be cut down to the four minutes you end up with. We took uh, Alan Treeman as an example. He had, we had about two and a half hours of interview on tape, which ended up a total of 15 minutes when it was cut into its final version. And of that 15 minutes, maybe a maximum of three will be used in the final film. And that's the whole process from the beginning to the end. Well, I've considered my job to be uh, more or less a technical director, if you want to call it that, and a budgetary uh, person, trying to figure out, uh, could we make this film under the budget that was allocated? and even uh, prescribing a proposed budget uh, before we knew what the film was going to be like and what the film was going to contain. And uh, then coming up with, uh, uh, out of the sky blue, uh, $56 worth of press tape for titles when we have a hot press machine to make them, and, and uh, you know, uh, coming up with, uh, arguing with the artistic people who said, well, we need the $56 for the titles uh, material, this kind of thing. I concern myself uh, basically not with the, what the film would uh, be like or would it be successful, uh, could we sell it or distribute it, but mainly that it, we did get a film out of it, if at all possible, and a great deal of learning occurred. A lot of learning did occur, and that was the design purpose and ultimate goal of the Institute itself. Just the thought of working together with a group of 25 or so people, and also having experts here to be able to pack a very condensed course into a four-week period, seemed to be a very interesting and exciting way to do what they set out to do. Whether or not the film which comes out of this turns out to be a hit or a flop, it's almost immaterial if one can learn the processes involved and also have a better appreciation of film as a medium. When the program came to a close, all the footage had been shot, and all the sound and music had been recorded. What remained after the four-week program was the assemblage of all these materials. This was completed by the faculty of Ithaca College at various times over the next three-year period. It's a process of evolution. It's a process of growth. It's a process of, of uh, finding out where your mistakes are and going back and doing it over again. Now, this is the ideal situation, but in a four-week program of this kind, nothing can be ideal. So, but the one thing that you, as I said, the, the two things that you hope is that some that the people had a meaningful experience as far as their own development is concerned, one, and two, that they learned something in the process of doing it. The final result is less important, even though everybody would love to have the greatest film in the world come out of it. That's not the most important thing. It is fundamentally a learning experience. I would say that this film experience was definitely one of the best of my life. Even with all the mistakes, I got what I expected and more. That's very important. I don't think that the problems here have been of a different kind or a different order than any other such institute would be. My own observation has been that some people have and some people haven't uh, gotten very much out of it. Uh, as for me, I've gotten an enormous amount out of it.